In this video, we will talk about Newton's laws of motion. These laws of motion relate force and motion. Now, the first law is associated with a property of a body called inertia. Inertia is a tendency of a body to remain at rest or to keep moving once it is set in motion. The second law relates force to acceleration through the proportionality constant mass. The third law describes action and reaction, which are two opposite forces, but equal in magnitude. Before we discuss these three laws in more detail, let us first look at the concept of force. Force is a vector, and we measure force in the SI units of Newtons. The abbreviation is capital N. Examples of force. Weight. Weight is a form of force. Now, this is the definition of weight. Weight, since it is force, it is measured in the unit of Newtons. Essentially, the definition of weight is mass of an object times the strength of gravitational acceleration. So mass is measured in kilograms. G is the gravitational acceleration measured in the units of meter per second squared. So the direction of weight, since weight is a force, is the same as the direction of the gravitational acceleration, which is downward. So if you have a mass, say, of 3 kilograms, then the weight of this mass is 3 times 9.81, which is 29.43 newtons. So this is the weight of this mass. So you see, mass is a scalar, and weight is a vector. Another example is the normal force. A normal force, N, is a force that results when something is pressing against a surface. So let's say you have an object, a box of some kind. The weight of this box is pressing against this table. Let's say the weight of this box is 10 newtons. Now the surface of that table will in turn press against the box in an opposite direction. So this upward force shown by this blue arrow is the normal force N. And the magnitude is also the same as the weight, which is 10 newtons. So this is the weight and this is the normal force. Another example of normal force is, let's say, if you have a wall and you press a box, let's say, horizontally like that by pushing it against the wall. So this is the force that you supply. Let's say it's 20 newtons. Now what the wall would do, it would press against the box in an opposite direction like that. And this normal force will have the same magnitude as the force that you apply on the object, which is, again, 20 newtons. So the direction of these normal forces are always 90 degrees with respect to the surface on which the object is pressed. So here is 90 degrees, and in this case, it is also 90 degrees. So that's normal force. Other examples include tension, let's say, in a string. friction that slows down a motion, and so on. So this is the first law definition, the definition of Newton's first law. A body at rest remains at rest, or a body in constant velocity motion remains that way unless there is a net force acts on it. In other words, when no net force acts on a body, the body either remains at rest or moves with constant velocity in a straight line. Once a body has been set in motion, no net force is needed to keep it moving. 
So a body acted on by no net force moves with constant velocity, which may be zero, and therefore zero acceleration, because constant velocity means zero acceleration. This brings us to the second law, which states the net force acting on a body, the word net is important, equals mass times the acceleration of the body. The mass of the body times the acceleration of the body. So you see, when there is no net force, there is no acceleration. So the net force controls the acceleration, or the acceleration produced in a mass is proportional to the net force imparted on it. Now what is a net force? A net force is actually a vector sum of forces. Now let's say you have an object with mass m, and it's acted upon by let's say three forces. So two going to the right and one going to the left. So the first force is let's say two newtons, the second one is let's say six newtons, and the one opposing or going to the left is let's say three newtons. So how do you calculate the net force on this body M? So in this case the net force is given by two plus six i hat, i hat means the vector, unit vector that goes along the right hand side or along the positive x direction, positive x axis direction, plus minus 3 i hat. So these two forces refer to that and that, and this one is referring to that. So the net force works out to be 8 minus 3 i hat, which is 5 i hat in the unit of newtons. So if the mass is let's say 2 kg, 2 kilograms, then the acceleration must be 5 i hat, which is the net force divided by the mass, 2, which is 2.5 i hat meter per second squared. You see the direction of the acceleration and the direction of the net force are the same because these are two parallel vectors. So now you see if you have an object that is moving with a constant velocity of let's say 5 i hat meter per second. So since the velocity is constant, the acceleration is zero. And from Newton's second law, that implies the net force acting on this object is also zero. So as long as the net force is zero, it will keep on moving with a constant velocity of 5 i hat meter per second. So you see how Newton's first law and second law are related in a very intimate way. Just a quick example, a net force of 5 newtons is exerted in a box of mass 3 kg. So what is its acceleration? It's a straightforward problem. So you have a a mass, a box, let's say with a mass of 3 kg, and the net force is acting in some direction. Let's assume it's going to the right. So this is the net force, which is 5 newtons, i hat. Okay, so the acceleration is obviously will point in the same direction as the direction of the net force. So in this case, it is 5 i hat, which is the net force, over 3 meter per second squared, which is 1.67 i hat meter per second squared. So the direction of the acceleration is also to the right, like that. Let's look at this problem. If the mass of a car is 2000 kg, calculate its weight. Now earlier we talked about the difference between weight and mass. Mass is a scalar, weight is a vector. Weight is a form of force. So, in this case, the mass is given to be 2,000 kilograms. So the weight of the car, say on Earth, is controlled by the gravitational acceleration, which we know to be minus 9.81 j hat meter per second squared. So multiplying these two, 
will give you the weight as minus 19,620 newtons, 620 J hat newtons. So the fact that it is a minus J hat means the weight of this car is heading downwards as it should. Now let's look at the third law. Newton's third law of motion states to every action there is always a post and equal reaction. Now this statement action and reaction are forces. They are of equal magnitude but opposite in direction. Now what this means is that when two bodies interact the forces on the bodies from each other are equal in magnitude but opposite in direction. So equal in magnitude, opposite in direction. So let's look at this setup. So you have a box A and you have a book B leaning against that box in the manner shown. So of course at the contact point, which is here, there will be a force exerted by the book B on the box A and it's heading like that. So this arrow here, the red arrow, is the force on A by B. At the same time, the box will exert its own force on the book B like that. So now this blue arrow is force on B by A. So let's call the force on A by B to be F A by B and let's call the force on B by A as F B by A. So the third law says these two forces are equal in magnitude but opposite in direction as you can see. The blue arrow is heading to the right and the red arrow is heading to the left. But the magnitudes of these two forces are the same. So that is the essence of the third law, Newton's third law of motion. Another thing to note is that these two forces are acting on different objects. The force on A by B is acting on A and the force on B by A is acting on B. So they are a pair of action-reaction forces acting on two different objects. Finally, let's look at the following problem. Four cases are shown. Rank the cases from the lowest to the highest magnitude of acceleration. So this is basically an exercise on Newton's second law. In case one, the net force is six minus four, which is two Newtons going to the right. So the acceleration in the first instance, the first case is two divided by two, which is one meter per second squared. Now case two, the net force is 40 minus 35, which is 5 newtons to the right. And the acceleration for the second case is 5 divided by 1, which is 5 meter per second squared. Case number three, the net force is 9 minus 1 plus 2, and that will give you 6 newtons. So the acceleration for the third case is that 6 divided by mass, which is 3, so 2 meter per second squared. And finally, case 4, the net force is 20 minus 4, which is 60 newtons, and the acceleration is 16 divided by that mass 4, which is 4 meter per second squared. So to rank from the lowest to the highest, the lowest is acceleration in case 1, followed by acceleration in case 3, case 4, and then case 2. And that solves the problem. Thank you for watching.